Wonder Woman 84. The gift that keeps on giving, damn it. Going for the all the Oscars, including Best Picture. Yes, because what is this competition? Tenant. That's all there is. There's Wonder Woman and there's Tenant. That's it for No, there's there's Bad Boys for Life, which uh, you know it might be the best movie of the three. (laughs) Oh man. There's there were no releases this year in the theater. There's Sonic the Hedgehog. There was the Fantasy Island horror movie. There was what what came out? Like, what was what is it? What's Oscar contender? Dude, this I'm sorry, it was a bunch of shit. That's all there was. So could Wonder Woman eighty four win awards like major awards this year? Let me tell you something. This is this is I'm going to sum up my whole take on this this topic. If the Oscars even air this year, they have pretty much debunked themselves. They they should not even exist anymore. Because there is no value to the Oscars any longer. It's meaningless. And we've known this for a long time, but now this completely delegitimizes them. If they start, Wonder Woman was the best we had this year. It's awesome. The Academy gives Gal Gadot, um, you know, best actress for the year. I'm sorry. I think she's beautiful. I think she's an okay actress. She is not a Helen Mirren. Okay, screw that bullshit. I'm I'm I will I've been done with the Oscars for many, many years. This is <laughs> this is going to end the Oscars credibility. Do you know why the Oscars came into being to begin with? At least this is a story I've heard why they came into being way back in the old days in the golden age of Hollywood, why they no, created the Oscars. Hollywood, Hollywood had a bad reputation of being tawdry. Okay. Oh, shocker. The Oscars were created, the Academy Awards were created to elevate it and make Hollywood seem better in the eyes of the American public who did not necessarily have a good opinion of Hollywood at the time, and it was to raise them up. Now, I don't think Hollywood cares about how they look to the American public, but I, I maybe because they're, they're, they're disconnected, they don't know how the American public actually sees them. I don't so know. I gotta, I, I will, I will say not not being involved in the industry at all, but just, you know, anecdotally, my grandmother used to say that anybody, any, any woman who became an actress in her day was considered right on the level of, or slightly better than a prostitute. That's what she specifically told me. And this idea, when she said this, it it kind of scandalized me a little bit. And the more I thought about it and this whole concept that an actor is literally just a blank template for, you know, whatever the director, writer, filmmaker uh, wanted. And then especially today in the whole Me Too thing, casting couch, I'm saying all the buzzwords that's going to get you demonetized. (laughs) Um, All of these things, I started to realize, yeah, my grandmother was onto something there. You know, she she was kind of keyed in and this was not a secret. Everybody just assumed this. Um, So, yeah, there you go. You're talking to the man who was genuinely surprised at the whole Harvey Weinstein thing when that broke. And maybe I shouldn't have been. Maybe I shouldn't have been because I you're undermining your whole aged boomer thing. Here's the thing. Oh, I. I know you probably heard the thing and know I knew it all along, everything, but I, I didn't, I figured I, maybe I was probably being very naive. I thought this whole stuff, when they talk about casting couches, this is just, this doesn't no. happen in, in the modern day. No, I was thinking this is a holdover from maybe like the forties, some sleazy c- cigar chomping producer. This might have, I didn't, I didn't see it happening today. And then of course you find out it's all been covered up, still going on. And the sad thing was, I mean, my issues with Weinstein, whatever, he did get a lot of filmmakers their start, a lot of smaller guys. He wasn't, he would allow talent to come outside from Hollywood in. So I always respected him for that, at least. And then I learned this horror show about what he was doing behind the scenes. And it's, you know, it really caught me off guard. I didn't want to go see a movie for a while after that. Power corrupts absolutely. And, And when you understand that aspect of human nature, you kind of suspect it about everything. Um, there is a much 
tighter scrutiny on your average business, HR, all of that stuff than there has been on Hollywood. Hollywood has operated and, and, and I don't want to start a big thing, but just like with, you know, the church and I don't mean any specific church, I mean, churches in general. Yeah. All of them have their on their own level. Hollywood is the same way and they seem to operate outside and above the law. And then when there's some big scandal about it, you go, oh, big shocker. You know, this has happened in every aspect of life and you have avoided the scrutiny. No big surprise when it when it comes home to roost, you know? Yeah. And it's 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 just, you know, but they were the one thing I don't like about Hollywood, though, is I, I think they tend to project their own sins on the rest of the country, you know? Well, you know, I, 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 anyone who has listened to the the show or listened to me, I should say, with any regularity, has uh, heard me talk about Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and his talks with Barnes Law, um, talking about you know modern legal cases. And one of the things they talk about all the time is how projection is admission. Right. Mm. And, and when you start accusing someone of something, it probably means you're you're, you know, actually the one who is doing that thing. And they've mentioned so many high profile, politically motivated lawsuits lately that, you know, they're going after the president or the president's going after someone else and accusing them of this, that and the other you need to look at the person who's making the accusations and wonder if they're not guilty of exactly what they're accusing other people. Oh, I'm, I'm figuring this out lately. Yes. Just from what I've been hearing, like, yeah, we, well, we've seen news topics and it it tends to anyone with any brains knows this really. So that's why this whole culture where people are pointing the finger at social justice warriors and saying, you people are freaking hypocrites. Because you are blaming everyone for this, that, and the other, and you are the worst one. You blame people of being ists and phobes. You're the biggest ists and phobe there is. Yeah, some of the most bigoted statements come from that side. Like yes. some of the things I heard during the um quote unquote um civic unrest this past summer. But uh I like I, I you know, you know, I really need to follow your example the way you the way you phrase things. <laughs> well, I don't know. I was an English major, but it <laughs> Sometimes I do well, and sometimes I, I sound like um stumbling for words half the time. But uh, yeah, but I like uh, how he points out his 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 English major when really what it's coming down to is he's just a better man than I am. No, you know what was fu- well, you know what was funny though. Um, oh, I remember I was at I mean, I was, one of the stream. Damn it! <laughs> I, I got into a tr- I got into trouble once because I used I, I worked at a paper and I used the term. Uh, less when i should have used fewer lesser than and i should use fewer and like they were like you were an english major you don't know the difference between those two and then it became this whole thing but i've never forgotten that now i know how to use them so look i i i was not an english major but i i very much um excelled in 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 those 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 classes um i care a great deal about language i care a great deal about etymology um, and this whole concept of shades of meaning. Um, and it, that's why this modern age of, of um, co-opting of language bothers the heck out of me. I mean what I say when I say it. Yeah. You want to screw around with, you know, the meanings of words and stuff. Screw you. I mean what I say. And those words have meaning. You can pretend they mean something else but i meant what i meant you know that sounds better than anything that probably came out of the dialogue in wonder woman 84 <laughs> i love how you pivot back to i don't know no, how we got no, no i was saying it no i i, I was mentioned i think at the end she gives some message about truth and everybody's making fun of it saying it was nonsensical but um oh i love well, this wonder movie. woman you know mm-hmm. i i love there was uh, back in the 90s there was these oversized comics that they did of superman Batman and Wonder Woman. And I think Superman's was um I don't remember but they were like truth, justice and peace. That's what it was. Wonder Woman was truth, Batman was justice and Superman was peace. Remember, they're the trinity, right? 
That makes sense. Okay. Wonder Woman's whole thing is is truth, right? The the lasso of truth and everything. And mm-hmm. I don't I didn't see her story, but it had to do with truth. And uh Batman's was about justice. The only one that I actually read was Superman's and it was about peace. And it was this whole story where he it was kind of like Superman 4, but instead of it being about um um like nuclear weapons or whatever, it was about um trying to feed the world. And he realized that he could spend his whole day trying to make sure that everyone in the world got fed, but there was other issues that prevented, you know, his efforts from happening. Like there was uh, dictators in countries that were trying to control things and he couldn't overthrow every, you know, government in the world and, you know, take over as a despot to make sure that everyone got fed and, it was a very interesting, um, you know, polysocial kind of look at things. Why, why Superman can't just fix all the world's problems coming down to it. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't see that as a deconstruction. I see that as, as a certain amount of realism that kind of explains the stories that, you know, because it, it comes up all the time. Why doesn't Superman, prevent the world from, you know, destroying itself with nuclear weapons? Why doesn't he end poverty? Why doesn't he end hunger? That's really not what he's about. He can't. All of his powers, he can't fix all of the world's problems. Plus, if he does certain things and goes above and beyond on certain things, he becomes a dictator. He becomes a dictator. That's exactly yeah. what it what it came And, and we've seen that in some episodes of, like, Justice League, where they show the alternate universe where, where Superman does cross that line, and it's not pretty, you know? Yeah, no, they did that. Yeah. Yeah. They did that with the Armageddon 2000, uh, uh, the year that they did all those annuals uh, that related directly to the Elseworlds that they've done and so forth. Um those are areas where I think that the whole concept of deconstruction is worthwhile as a one shot. Um, anyway, the reason I bring that up is because wonder woman 1984 had every opportunity to focus on that whole truth thing that she's all about, but these writers and, and, and I'm, I'm looking at the director on this one. Cause she also wrote it, uh, has absolutely no clue what wonder woman is about. So again, you get a bunch of, you know, oh, she's got these powers and we got to work in the invisible jet and go, you know. So you end up with what you end up with. But we are, and that's the, the one quote from this article as well. The overall message, one right in 1984, has been applauded, whatever that message is. How the movie delivers its message has come in for some criticism, yeah, particular, particularly the minor story arc involving Steam. Steve inhabiting the body of a stranger without permission to get intimate with Diana. See, that's a nice way of putting it. Okay. Dude, I'm telling you, <laughs> this is one where everybody is unified on this one. I, I mentioned this last week. It's not just the social justice warriors. All of us are looking at that and going, the hell is wrong with you? That is a plot point that never should have happened. We should not even be having this conversation right now. 